and welcome to the Teaching Corner. Today we're going to be talking about study strategies. So I had a fellow teacher come to me and ask, what are some ways that students can study that are effective? And so if there's ever anything you're interested in or would like to see me do a, a video on, please leave a comment down below and let me know what that is so that I can make a video in the future. So today I'm going to give you 15 tips and tricks for how to study. As parents or teachers, we often fall into one or two categories. We either were really good students and so we don't necessarily know how to study, we just kind of did it, or we weren't great students and so therefore we're kind of having a hard time explaining to our kids how they should study and what would be the most effective. So here are some research-based strategies for you. The first thing is for our students to not cram. Research shows that our brains retain information and hold on to it for a longer period of time if we'll do it in smaller chunks over a long period of time. So instead of a student studying for two hours the night before a test and cramming and then forgetting the very next day everything that they studied, it's better for the brain if they would study for 30 minutes over four different days. The second thing that we can do is tell our students Sometimes you'll hear teachers tell our students to read over their notes, but that's actually been shown to be one of the least effective ways for a child to study. It does work for some students who are extremely visual and can just kind of photographically memorize their notes, but for the ma majority of us, we need to study in an interactive way. So one of those interactive ways is to use something called mnemonics. A mnemonic is a memory tool where you take the first letter of each word in a list and either make up some kind of sentence or some kind of phrase to go along with it, like Roy G. Biv for the colors in the rainbow. Another thing that we can do is to make flashcards. The important thing about flashcards though is for students to be able to use them interactively. So instead of cramming all the information on the front of the card, it's much better for students if they'll put some information on the front and some information on the back. I'm going to do a whole video on how to make uh, note cards really interactive and useful for students, so stay tuned for that. Another thing that we can do that's really helpful is to chunk information. And chunking just means that we put like information together and we're gonna study that information together. So if you were talking about waves, maybe on Monday you would study just waves in general, and on Tuesday you'd study about light waves, and on Wednesday you'd study about sound waves, or chunking information like that so that like information is together and it kind of goes in the same little file drawer in our filing cabinet when we're trying to remember that information we can pull it all out together. Another thing you can do for very visual students is to draw pictures. When I was in school I was a very visual learner so oftentimes after I would take my written notes I would doodle or draw a picture on the side to help me remember and to link all of that information together. That's expect especially useful in science class or sometimes you know in history when you're trying to figure out how certain things went together but uh, my students sometimes will use wordly wise to help with vocabulary in several of the different schools that I've been in and one of the things that I would do with the students on Monday is we would preview the words by reading through the words and the definitions but then I would have the students draw a picture beside the word to help them conjure up that vocabulary word. And they don't have to be great. I'm not a fantastic artist. I didn't have a great art teacher. So I basically ju just draw stick figures and that's fine. The point is just to have a visual representation to trigger a memory to help you remember the definition. If your student tends to be really auditory, a great way to help them remember information is to put the, the information to a song or a rap or a rhyme. One of the great places to look for that is here on YouTube. I would just caution as a parent or teacher, especially if you have younger kids, you might want to do the one, be the one who's doing the finding and then letting them watch the video after you've made sure that it's okay because anybody can post anything. So you just want to be careful with that. Uh, if you have a child who is also very visual, 
there's a great resource out there called Khan Academy. In our household, we use Khan Academy to help with math, but they have all different kinds of subjects. So once you get on there, you just put in whatever it is that your child is having difficulty with, and a video or a list of videos will come up, and you're, you can click on it, and there will be someone explaining whatever that like for us math concept is the great thing about this is that it's interactive because at the end it'll have like four multiple choice questions and the child can manipulate this stuff on there to figure out the math problem and then click on the answer and it will immediately give them feedback as to whether or not that answer is correct so that they know if they didn't get it correct then they can keep working at it until they do before they go do their homework Something else that you can use to help students is color. And you can visually code things to help them remember certain types of information. I'm gonna do a whole video on color coding things, so stay tuned for that as well. When studying, sometimes as a math teacher, I would often have students come to me and say, I can't study for math. Well, yes, you can. If your teacher doesn't give you problems the night before to help you study for a test, you can always rework problems that you've already done that you have the correct answer to. Almost every math teacher I know will assign problems and then the next day will go over those problems in class. So even if you didn't understand it or you got the wrong answer, you can write it down and then go and rework those problems. The biggest thing with that is not necessarily, you know, they may say, well, it's not novel numbers, but the thing is they're learning process. So the more times they do it, they're ingraining that process into their brain so that when it comes to the test and it is novel numbers, they'll know how to work it. Another great thing for students to do is to study with a partner. So when you study with a partner, you're now getting the information in two different ways. Because when I'm the one with the book and I'm asking the questions, I'm forcing my brain to think about how could a teacher put this in a question? How could this show up on a test? And then when I'm the one receiving the questions, I now have to answer those questions like they might be on a test. The highest level really is being able to teach someone how to do something. So in math, if I'm able to tell my partner how to do a math problem and get them to follow my step-by-step -step instructions, then you know that I really understand how to do it. You can also use study websites. In our household, we like to use Quizlet, www.quizlet.com. One of the things that this has helped with for us is it's removed me from the study process. So my son can put in the word and the definition and then he can use that as flashcards, he can play a game with it, he can even take a test and the test will come back with a percentage as to how well he did and he can take that test as many times as he needs to. The great thing about this is it takes you as the parent out of the studying equation and allows the student to do it on their own. If they do wordly wise in class, it also already has all of that on there. There's a code in the front of their wordly wise book that they can look it up and then they can use that code and it'll let them take the, the one that's already been made by the company so you know the words in there are accurate. The one thing I would caution with Quizlet, it is a very, what I would call a grammar based type of thing in that it's basically the word and the definition or the question and the answer. So it doesn't necessarily do higher order thinking with the kids. So if you have students in middle school and high school, it might be okay for them to learn like the definitions of things, but they may still need to study uh, a deeper way to understand connections for, for the test. Another thing you want is, and this goes along with what I just said, is not to just memorize the definition. You want to make connections. Our brains do a much better job of remembering information if we connect it to prior knowledge or things that we've learned before, or if we're connecting it to things that we're learning about the same subject in class. So like in history, don't just study you know, the name of the war and the date that it happened and who won. You want to study like the causes of it and how that impacted people. You want to make the deepest possible impression about something in your brain that you can. 
That will help you to remember the information and manipulate the information on the test. So if a teacher asks you a question that you haven't already seen, you're able to still figure out the answer. Another really important thing to remember is to go to tutoring if your school offers it. I know oftentimes schools will have after school tutoring for students. Sometimes teachers are required like to provide 30 minutes a week of tutoring. Be sure that you utilize that. I know sometimes it can be difficult with sports, so if you can't make it to that tutoring and you can make it to peer tutoring or having someone, an outside tutor, but utilize tutoring to help you if you need it. And the last thing is if you can't take good notes in class, if you have a student or a child who just physically can't keep up with the lectures in class or there's some kind of problem, auditory processing, something like that, and they just can't take good notes, if that's true, they should have the accommodation that they get teacher's notes at the end or a, peer's, a copy of peer's notes. But the other thing is you can encourage them to take at least the important words, the vocabulary word, the date, whatever, and then they can later go back and fill in those notes either with the help of a friend's notes or with the teacher's notes or something like that. But that way they are actively participating in class, taking notes how they can. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you later. Bye!